Good morning, boys. We've just got out of bed. Got an interview in like, what, 20 minutes? Are we gonna make it, Abby? Yeah. If you'd woke up when I told you to, we wouldn't be in this situation. So we're two minutes late. It's not too bad. Let's go. So what's your name and what do you do? My name is Wyatt Chang. I work as a senior technical game designer on Diablo 3 and the team's been really hard at work on patch 2.4. I'm Rob Foote. I'm a senior game producer on Diablo 3 and uh, been working on the on the project since uh, before Reboot. Loving it. So I've got some questions. I've got some questions. We're going to be asking some hard ones. Uh, hopefully you guys can give us some cool answers. Alright. So we're just going to get straight into it. The first and the most frequently asked question, and everyone was asking, will the density lag, like as far as, so, you know, density lag be fixed in 2.4? We, we did a server slam uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, that was a PTR event where we asked players to, to log in and help test out some optimization. Wow. That was actually that. super helpful. Um, big thank you to, to everyone who, who logged in for the server slam. Our engineers collected a bunch of data, and they used it to make uh, some performance improvements for 2.4. I mean, I, I so improvements or fix. Well, there's uh, I wouldn't say fix because basically it, it, there's no one issue that makes you know things go wrong. It's 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 the engineers describe it as as like just a giant pie, right? The the CPU has a certain amount of time to do the calculation you need to do, and it's not any one thing. It's the sum total of everything going on. Um, can, can cause issues and so any optimization they can make should help. Sounds good, sounds hopeful and promising. It, it's things that are being worked on but yeah I mean um, these things are unpredictable. Uh, honestly one of the things that made um, some surprises for the team was Kanai's cube caused players to have more powers so more things were going on plus there are new sets that were also causing more things to go on um, and it, sometimes that's difficult to foresee uh, which is why the best we can do is try to optimize the code and do the best we can but our engineers are really really smart guys and they're working hard on it and, and honestly that's why the ptr is so important to us getting it out to test because we have a great qa team that tests all, as much as they can but sometimes in the wild You'll find someone who finds a very unique, yeah. uh, a very unique gear setup, and uh, suddenly you know there's unforeseen results. So catching those before we go to the live environment is huge. So uh, very thankful to everyone who joins the PTR and helps us uh, track those down. Do you plan on making a Paragon cap or something with a similar effect, basically end the the permanent grind? To, you know? No, there's there's no plans for any kind of Paragon cap. Um, Gosh, uh, there's like the long answer and the short answer. Long answer, please. Oh, no, you, we, you, oh, you, I'll give you the long answer later, um, but uh, let me give you a short answer. Okay. If you think about what like like earning experience looks like, and, and there's actually a lot of activities you can do in Diablo 3, right? You can um, try to get blood shards. You can try to get death's breath. You can try to get legendary items. You can try to level up your legendary gems. Um, you know, but a lot of these have to do with running greater rifts or doing the rift greater rift cycle, and then there you can try to get more XP. And um, I think actually someone on your podcast, uh, State of Sanctuary, mentioned it that the big problem occurs when these aren't all the same thing, and when XP is this like completely different activity than these other things. When I have to completely change my gear and completely change the activity that I'm doing, like maybe I'm doing a different greater rift than I would be in order to maximize my blood shards or my legendary drops or my legendary gems. Like when those aren't the same, I feel like I'm giving up all of this in order to get XP. And so one of our goals with 2.4 is to bring those back into alignment. So the activity that you're doing to get XP also happens to be the activity that you were going to do anyways for blood shards, legendary items, and in particular, the new uh, Kanai's Cube recipe, um, the one that lets you augment an item. If you're mostly focused in your head about leveling up legendary gems so you can augment items and then you happen to get Paragon levels on the way, then it's going to feel very different. I understand that, and the, the removal of experience gear was definitely a, a great change for the game. But at the end of the day, Paragon levels are so strong and they're so easy to get that it's just like straight away it just becomes the end game. You're just like, all right, well, I'm going to need to have Paragon 2000 if I want to compete in the end game. It, it's hard to say for sure um, where all the chips will fall because 
uh, I mean, sometimes changes, you know, the, the ecosystem changes, right? And whether you do, you know, bounties best or riffs best, like there were times when, when people were just doing riffs and they weren't doing greater riffs. Um, and, and so things change, and I think it's hard to predict exactly how things will play out. It's hard to predict whether XP will become still the sole dominant focus or if leveling up these legendary gems actually is. Was like, well, actually, since I'm getting XP at the same time, you know, maybe I'm thinking more about the mm. augment item. Having the fourth gem will definitely force you to do more one percent runs. The, the fourth more, roll, yeah, yeah, the fourth roll. And right. just a quick question on that augment: Can you remove that gem? Like, can you remove the augment, or is that permanent? You, so you, you can't sort of, remove the augment, but you can replace it um, with a with a higher yeah, well, one. So if you do like a, a seventy legendary gem, you're adding three hundred and fifty. Okay. Guessing you're going to add either dexterity or vitality, depending on whether you use an emerald or an amethyst. And then if you later get like a seventy-five gem or even a seventy-one, then you can add another. override it. So override it. You can't update that augment from the. You can you can basically replace the augment so, okay. that's there with the back right. one. That's cool. Do loot tables exist? Um, in what sense? I've heard that so loot tables, phrase used so, in, in different contexts, so I want to make sure we're talking about the same thing. So a loot table, so when you, okay, so a, a particular item drops, and then you see it again, and again, and again, in that particular game. And I don't know if it's just confirmation that, bias. That is confirmation bias. Or, there, there is no, there's no, it's, the items are pulled randomly from uh, a table of items. Can you, can like you the, describe? Of all, of all items. Can you, so is that literally how it works, it's just, Every item is available. Like, okay, assuming that you're doing like Tommy One Plus, you can just literally get anything. Well, all, all the items that you know are available at any given time. Yeah, they're not like allocated based on the game or anything like that. No, that would be. Conf I, you seem you seem in disbelief that there's no that it's. <laughs> well, well, I mean, I've had I've had situations where I've had you know okay, I haven't seen a furnace drop right. then like for like you know three weeks i have not seen a furnace <laughs> and then you get me this season yet yeah well, okay. i'm pretty far in trying to get i know where you're going and then you see you get and then i get like two, two at a time yeah. and then i get yeah. like literally not even an hour later i'll get another one and i get another one and then then i won't see any, any more for like a month and, no, so, and it's just like no. how does that work how it's, <laughs> how it's so confusing if there's no loot tables yeah and then i'm just it's just the chances of that happening are very 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 slim uh you might you might you might be surprised i actually i don't know, I, I won't get into okay, the, the super mathiness but if you if you break down the probabilities it's actually kind of surprising i don't know if you ever heard of the of the of the birthday paradox it's it's this idea of i don't know whatever we're kind of kind of diablo kind of <laughs> is if you, uh, it's like if you have a, a party and people are coming into a room, right? Uh, how many people have to come into the room before there's a greater than 50% chance that two people share a birthday? Probably not that many. It's, it's, it's way lower it's like than you think. It's, it's like in the, it's in the 20s. It's in the 20s. It's like, what, there's 365 days in a year. How, that, that's a greater yeah. thing. But that, that's the paradox, is I'm that saying. our intuitions don't match the, the mathematical reality. So will area damage be 100% fixed for 2.4? Yeah, there's a couple things that don't benefit from the area. There is also a couple of uh, set bonuses and legendaries where the area wasn't benefiting from the increased damage. Um, you know, I, I, we fixed the ones that we currently have on our bug list. But uh, I mean, I can't promise you 100%. We'd like to. Cause, so you'd like to? Okay, because right now for monks, it's like, it, mathematically, like on, if you do a spreadsheet, it's obviously the best choice. We put it in the game and it's just it's horrible. It doesn't, I don't know, obviously a lot of the multipliers are not functioning there. Yeah. Area, which I think like some will go set, just doesn't work with it. Like, it's it's hard know. to go into the um, exact specifics. Um, uh, but we, you're looking we, we track it. them and, and, yeah, and we try to fix them when, when they come up. So will it be a Diablo expansion or Diablo 4? And when can we expect it? Well, that, yeah, I mean, there's, we have no announcements to make at BlizzCon <laughs> today. Uh, and honestly, the team has been so focused, like, you're like laser focused on trying to wrap 2-4. Uh, um, I think Kevin mentioned it uh, in, in the talk yesterday that we're actually going to be going to BTR hopefully later next week with it. So, like, we're really on the train of trying to get 2-4 out to players as quickly Yeah, that's PTR came out so fast. So I'm gutted. I'm not going to be home by the time it comes out. It's, <laughs> it's going to be hard. I'm going to miss the hype train. Sad boy. <laughs> Well, I mean, if you want, we could just delay. <laughs> no, 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 Just for you, you know, just we'll for quick. We'll put it in the patch notes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that would hate me. Okay. 
<laughs> Quinn couldn't play, so we pushed it off for two weeks. <laughs> so do you personally think that there's too much disparity between good rifts and bad rifts? Yes. Um, with a caveat, we do think that, I mean, I, I guess kind of implicit in that question is uh, an appreciation that some amount of random variation is required. I agree. Um, so, so we're just talking about how big the disparity is. And, and yeah, we're making some improvements. Um, actually, one of the things I can clarify, so if you were um, uh, at the panel yesterday, um, we kind of talked a little, we got a question at the end about the caves. And caves. Uh, and and we are we're trying to we, we have actually made some changes already internally to the caves and it's not just about the wreckable objects which with action combat coming to PC you know grants you a speed boost when you um, break a wreckable which can help you you know get around a little faster when you're in the caves but we actually um, changed some of the tile selections around so that like some of the parts of the cave are very narrow and some of the caves actually are kind of decently open. And so we're trying to use those more open space tiles and the narrow ones less often. And we're also making sure that even if you do get the caves tile set for any particular floor of your rift, uh, it's a lot shorter than it used to be. So you, you won't be trapped in one for you know four minutes. Yeah, there's one cave tile set where it just, it just goes forever. Yeah, we just we just lop it off. We're like, look, you this is this is the maximum length that a cave can be on a greater rift. Oh, brilliant! That sounds good. This is a question that I just was really curious about. So why can you not rebind left click and right click? Because I've literally had to manually change my mouse settings. So my mouse when I press it, it's like now the grave key, and I, I have to use the rest of my computer all right because I can't rebind the left and the right click. Oh, um, yeah, sure. Yeah, you know, I I know that the the input code for Diablo is definitely more complicated than meets the eye. Uh, uh, that's not to say it's not a solvable problem, but um, I want to say that we did explore it even before the original Diablo a little bit, and um, it was a little bit rough when it came to not just interacting with monsters, but then you have to pick up items and then interact with the UI, and we had some internal usability issues and people would flip and then there'd be confusion of whether am I picking up items with the right click? Am I activating, um, we call them gizmos, like the stash and chest with the right click? Um, I, I have memories of something like that. That was a long time ago. Um, I do remember we made a decision that given the complexity and the number of customizations to support that properly, it was kind of out of scope. Um, maybe it's a decision we should revisit, I don't yeah, know. I mean, I was also thinking, I was talking with um, two of our UI designers in the Slaughter Cafe, and we were just talking with fans, and some of the fans were talking about UI in general, uh, like how much you can customize, like, oh, I wish I could drag my chat window to a different location on screen, and then we kind of got into a theoretical discussion of, well, there are games where UI is completely locked down. You have no choice. You can't rebind. You know, you're just you're just on rails. Whatever they gave you is what you got. And then you have something on the other spectrum where you can do anything you want. You can, you can change how your UI looks. You can reposition everything. You can rebind everything. And so we had to pick something that felt like a sweet spot. And that's not going to make. That's not going to make. Yeah. People, well, there's all the people that want. I want to be able to do yeah. everything. And we totally get that. So I think. But I mean, I think listening to what people. Well, that goes on to my, so i got another question right now, they don't pray, so why do we not have add-ons, like World of Warcraft add-ons, just bent in Diablo 3, why does that not happen? I guess there's an idea that the UI is part of the game. Um, I mean, World of Warcraft, I mean, they, they've, they've had UI add-ons, it's, it's had its ups and it's had its downs. Um, I think it's great that players in that game are able, I mean, it definitely has obvious benefits, so I can understand wanting to request it. At the same time, it's greatly affected the the route that the game has taken in terms of like like how hard does a raid boss fight have to be um, and it's like if you if the raid encounter designers um, I, I used to do raid encounter design so I'm pretty familiar with this yeah. part is you design some mechanic and then you realize oh well this is great with the UI we have now but if someone writes a UI mod that does this it's going to trivialize the mechanic. Um, and you you see that happening a lot, and so there's there's almost like you're, you're trying to challenge players, but then now you're not allowed to challenge them in this one particular way 
because now there's a UI mod that tells you when you're too close to an ally or exactly how far you're standing from a monster. And I mean, it's 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 a tough line, but but then you start getting into also there was even um, like a. a I'm trying to think of a particular boss, but well, anyway, maybe you get the general idea. I understand that, yeah, that I, heavily affects so you don't not want to just make it distances. Easy. Well, it's, sometimes there's even just like you're trying to manage a particular buff or debuff or boss mechanic or timers. Like there's so many things that um, basically, I mean, WoW is, is in a state where they just release new bosses. And so it's, it's they're constantly adding new stuff, whereas we're curating an existing world where we always want you to explore all of it and we you know we're not gonna redesign you know a whole bunch of mechanics because mods cause the mechanics to become invalid. The thing is people just shortcut this and then, then they use third party add-ons effectively which do kind of like what well, what you're saying trivializing it and then <laughs> so what, what do you think about that now you're gonna be taking a stand on any of these third party applications Including, you know, the increasing number of like bots in Diablo three. Obviously, third party applications are against our terms of service, yeah. uh, and it is something we take really seriously. I mean, uh, honestly, we do a lot of things behind the scenes, and we don't tell we can't we can't tell you about them because we would be tipping off the people that we're trying to catch. Like, you know, we, we don't want to give out information that's going to help the help the botters to help these third party guys get around what what we're doing so it is something that we so do it's, happening. it's something we always we, we always are taking it seriously and we're, we're doing things all the time and we always have we um, we got the open letter right obviously yeah. i think we mentioned that before um and that was, and andrew uh our new one of our new community managers sort of said hey we received this letter and, and so the the team takes it seriously um we just we just can't talk about what we're doing because it just it makes it our the, the job details, that much yeah, the details yeah. are, are hard to talk um, about. Regarding some of the UI changes though, I mean, um, we yeah. updated the buff bar in this patch. That was good. That was right? brilliant. That was awesome. And, and I think that um, that's a great example where, um, I mean, we, we recognize that people need a better buff bar, so we put it in. But then there are some other things that we don't like what that people are, you know, enhancing. Yeah. Um, and so I think we kind of took a look at that and said, okay, well, which ones are we, we would say, oh, you know what, this would be a good addition to the game. And which ones are we like, oh, that's actually really offensive. And, and we don't like that. And that, because that, that just feels like cheating, right? So um, we kind of had a, a discussion and evaluation. Um, trying to draw a line. One last question. Okay, brilliant. Let's, let's make this a good one. Can we expect to see microtransactions coming to US and EU servers? I think we announced Stash Space yesterday, right, at the panel, and how everyone is getting the opportunity to buy a new tab for free. Um, the, the business model in every region is different, and I think this question gets asked a lot because we have, you know, purchasable cosmetics in China. But um, you know, one of the things, and, and this is a great kind of like last question type thing, um, is to is, is for people to understand that the business model is different per region. And in North America, um, we sold a box. And players purchased a, 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 you know, a box product and Reaper of Souls with, with the Blizzard name on it. And it's really, really important to Blizzard as an organization, all the way up through to Mike Morheim, that players know that when they buy a game with the Blizzard name on it, they're going to get a lot of value and quality out of that. Um, some of the reception after the original Diablo 3 shipped was you know less than positive. It was a little bit mixed. It was positive in a lot of lot of ways, but some players felt like it wasn't enough. And um, honestly I think the team is just putting so much love into the game. Um, and we're not, you know, doing other things because we want to say, hey, not like this is the way Blizzard works. If you were making more money and more profit, surely that you'd have like you know more resources, more well, team members. I, I would say honestly, like I think another great thing about working at Blizzard is they have a very long view, and that sure you can you could charge for small incremental things like you know our patches contain. I mean, we're giving you know we're giving players so much amazing content, and we just give to them and uh, I think the reception is always very positive when we put a new patch we get, uh, 
huge uptick. A bunch of people come back and play, check out the new content. Um, you know, could you charge for something like that? Maybe. Um, but you know, in the long term, like for, for products down the road, for you know, and also just having trust in the brand of Blizzard. Like when you buy that game, yeah. when you buy Diablo three, Reaper of Souls, you know, like. It's it's going to be a like a, you know. it, it's 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 a little cheesy to say, but it's true. Is is like the Blizzard brand and players knowing that they can trust that brand is way more important than than some extra bucks. Fair enough. Thank you for your time. Thank you. It's been great. It's been great. Cheers. Oh, yeah. Which which what question was the long answer, short answer? As the Paragon one.